Tacos Nachos Amigos and welcome to Record Breakers, our wonderful music podcast where a group of friends gather together to share music with each other, an album at a time. It's like a little book club for music. Uh, fun time had by all. I'm Petey Rave, your, your, uh, your man on the scene, man on buttons, on the levers. And Are you a and scene police. queen, Petey? <laughs> yes, bitch. Um... <laughs> Slay. Yes, slay, queen, slay. Uh, uh, here with me is my team, my squad, my crew, my coven, my quorum. Uh, we've got uh, David. I am on day three without pop, and I swear I'm fine. I swear I'm fine. Don't look at me. Uh, we've got Drew. Fuck a fade out. Yes. <laughs> oh and, wow! Fade out. Okay. okay. <laughs> and we've got Brett. I, I thought that somebody was going to be talking about Faye Go um, after this pop talk, and I thought we were going to have some regional, like uh, Ohio and uh, Michigan war of no. the of the Juggalo beverage. Um, I literally which, don't have the energy for that right now. Yeah, I mean, no, no. like I I don't mind Faygo except for that Arctic Sun flavor. I'm kind of like um. Yeah, Arctic Sun uh, is moon, kinda... A moon mist can go fuck itself, um, but, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, I, I, I don't have I strong some Faygo of opinions, I just know moon <laughs> mist is their bad, when, uh, their when the sprite. Store you, when you, the store you got near you is a Dollar General, you, oh, you sometimes like, you, pick up some Faygo. That's I just mean, all I'm going to say about yeah, that. Yeah. You can go to the Target and get you some Faygo and feel, like, as free as you want to be. Live your life. Before they put a Walmart in my town, the nearest Walmart and or Target was like 20 minutes away. You think me as a 14 year old was going to go t- like 20 minutes hey, you know, away? If you need three car? liters of no. love, yes. you know, yes. with all three <laughs> liters of fine quality soda pop uh, yes. in your gullet. Uh, yes. We're talking about soda this week, Petey. Yes, the soda uh, breakers. <laughs> I uh, literally of... just said. That's I chilling. need to kick pop. Uh, I need I need to stop, get back. Doobie doobie doo wop. Um. All right. Speaking of pop, uh, we're talking about an album this week. Uh, of course, as we do every week, we're talking about music. Uh, the album being provided to us is none other than Drew. Drew, what have you got for us this week? Well, um, it's an album that came out relatively recently. Um, meaning during uh the current pandemic um and was created sort of inside of it in some ways it's from a band i brought on before and it's band from manchester uh known as pale waves uh this album was who am i show (laughs) enough whoa (laughs) um yes who are they Drew? Uh, how dare you how dare you yes uh, <laughs> for, the for cat the wants audio them. listeners as i said at the, sack at looking the top, cat yeah i'm i'm cutting out the carbonated sugar beverages from my life hey, and, and I, drew, live, I live that life with you down in the 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 lower right quadrant just decided to make seven up yours but yes. you know yes um don't worry you got you got me I, i'm in here with you i've got just high quality h2o in here just none but nothing but hydration right here but speaking of, uh <laughs> um speaking of yes let's talk about expectations for this album this is definitely uh uh an artist we talked about but but uh a different kind of album uh david what were your expectations coming into this album my expectations from the last exciting time we had pale waves on the record breakers podcast was something that i might have enjoyed i I enjoyed what i saw as kind of a goth seasoned synth poppy rock mix But I like when an artist can do something different from what they did before. So this was not it. And 
this album was very influenced by a time period and a genre of music that is not exactly one that I love, but I'm okay with that. I can listen to something even if I don't necessarily love it. Um, Brett, what expectations did you have coming into this album? Well, I don't think I was here for the. Uh, I think uh, the Curly was sitting in the uh, the rotating me chair the last yeah. time we talked about uh, this hour. So I have no clue. Oh wait, but, was uh, it? Yes, it was. Brett wasn't here. Oh, I, I, I just forgot confirmed. about that. Uh, no, I was always here. Yeah. I just wasn't present. Um, oh right, 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 right. I, I I was coming to you Day from thing. my my altar. Yeah, I, I'm. I was hanging out at in in San Diego. Yes. Um, look at me, uh, Linux. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you know, Dude. yeah, that, that's curly, cur- uh, you got, black you velvet Linux. New, you, black have velvet you, what, Linux what new nail boss. color? <laughs> really yeah. nice. You got your really nice nail color, uh, you know, going on, you know, it's like, uh, you got a wig going on the side. It's, it's fantastic. <laughs> so, so to, 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 to let you know, I had no clue, but I did see the album cover. And I looked at it, and I was like, "Oh, the album cover, yeah, yeah. album cover, yeah, yeah." You know? I mean, you could also like if you layer on blurs the the color palette of the, that one blur yes. album, you'll have that too. Yes. Um, <laughs> because at least that that the one right there, at least they're using some like uh, some Fujifilm Superia, like yes. and and kind of overexposing it. It's, it's uh, literally the same yellows. album cover. It's the same. It's the same pose. I mean, it's, it's the dream. The DreamWorks uh, album cover. Uh, now, here's the question: Was this on purpose? I everything on this album was done on purpose, and exactly. we will talk about some of those on purpose things. <laughs> exactly. This is this is the most it's, like everything was I, done for a reason. I feel like I, I was hoping that this would be like genuine and organic and sincere. Uh, n- now I'm a little concerned. I, I I would say it's not necessarily not sincere, but we'll talk about it in a moment. Right. Uh, is- but yeah, my my influences. Well, I would say in my expect, I I wasn't I I wasn't sure what to expect from this. I remember the album being very like eighties and very like eighties synth pop uh, in, in in certain circles, but like uh, and enjoying it, and I was looking forward to this album and enjoying it you know, for what it is, um, and. I knew that it was going to be, I, I I knew, if I remember, I knew that it was going to be enjoyable and influences on the sleeve in, like, the, the most obvious way, but uh, and, but from what Drew said, I, I kind of figured there was going to be a shift in sound, but I wasn't sure what that shift in sound was going to be, uh, but let's talk about what it is musically. Uh, Drew, how would you describe this album musically? Um, one as PD's not wrong. Um, so by the way, for the audio listeners, I kept popping up Avril Lavigne's "Let Go" album cover. Yeah, <laughs> that that we'll get to that in a minute. Yes. But yes. Um. So, like I said, it did come out recently. Uh, the band experienced um a near fatal bus accident. Um, right at the beginning of 2020, and like during the process of like penning this record and going through that um so there's some of that um there's some of the fact that it was 2020 uh <laughs> that's yeah. in this record um there's a lot a little bit um there's also a lot of um the singer why can't i remember her name right now um i think it's heather sarah Grayson. connor um yeah that's dealing with things uh like sexuality and uh, just living heather through yeah. changing ideas yes heather baron gracie i was right okay cool um thank you uh none of those gracies yeah <laughs> no. um not the john wayne uh, i want to <laughs> see if she she's got moves like hoist she can got an arm bar <laughs> got, got, a, got a triangle yes. And in this album, like the last album, takes a lot from uh, very pointed inspirations. And it it is kind of obvious at once. Um, Baron Gracie, 
makes mention that she grew up listening to a lot of um, Alanis Morissette and Avril Lavigne. And this is very like late nineties, early oh, aughts. Boy, like, what? Female. You, you, you t- what? I know it's crazy, right? Yes. Um, it is wow. crazy that the person who made this record may have listened to a lot of late nineties and early aughts, um, girl power, uh, but, but the mainly fresh pop. flavor of it. Yes. Like weird. Um, and that inspiration, like the last record is worn on its sleeve. And I think to a very good degree, um, I think that it's something where when you have sort of the gift, I don't want to say gift of time, um, since they weren't able to tour because, you know, the world and everything. Uh, yeah, but have... we couldn't tour either, so. Yeah. Yeah. We, we didn't spend a lot we of share, time. We, we share that, that burden with them. Yeah. Um, well, I was going to say about the not touring is they spent time like sort of tweaking these knobs. Like Brett said, there isn't anything that feels like it wasn't deliberate, like it wasn't put there. Um, and I think that that can be in part to them really taking that time. Um, they also recorded part of this with a guy who's worked with uh, people like the Foo Fighters, Muse, um, and stuff like that in L.A., and we're actually recording parts of this in L.A. and parts back in Manchester because of them trying to get home on planes during a pandemic. Um, but Any word if it was Daryl Dragon's studio with uh, with Spickles' um, 2020? No. <laughs> it was producer Rich Costi. Um, uh, he's not a captain from Captain to Neil. It's going to be like uh, the guy who wrote Puff the Magic Dragon, but... Sorry, carry on, Drew. I'm <laughs> I'm derailing you in the dumb ways. Yes. No, it's great. Um, but yes, there is like a lot of that like pop girl uh influence of that. There's also tinges at times with an energy that begs more into Kaz's Paramore territory, a little bit of brand new uh territory and stuff like that. Shout out to it's the some... Port Laureate of uh, Record Breakers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Gotta mention one of them, right? Um, can't be contained by the 575 um but it all sort of mashes up i think well um and with themes that i think are very pointed right now it's something where like these topics are discussed a lot um coming of age uh gay rights and finding love and stuff like that and i think it's dealt with here in a fun way. Yes, some of it is very on sleep, but I think that it feels more like somebody taking like, I listen to a lot of this, so I'm going to do it in that genre, and I think it was done well. Uh, David, how would you describe the sound musically? Why did you have to go and make things so complicated? There it is. There you go. It, it was, it was going to be said by somebody on this episode. Yes. The, the complicated reference. So yes. Brett gets the points. I'm a skater boy. Yeah. Far be it from me, progressive rock fan, to disparage <laughs> anyone to make an album that wears its influences loudly on its sleeve. Far be it from me, I wouldn't do that. But this has a lot of influences that really kind of unapologetically shows them. To a point where it might almost be a detriment. Uh, I think their last album that we had on this podcast showed a lot of originality and a lot of real creativity. I feel like this is missing on that album. It's well composed, but it really doesn't it, it doesn't do anything that you haven't heard from the artists that influenced it. Um, Brett, how would you describe the sound musically? 
uh, th- we got ourselves a pop album. Um, but like, it's a pop album where if you bonked me on my head and convinced me that like some of these songs were released when in like 2002 and played on adult contemporary radio, they're made like that. Like all, like I, I could have been 100% fooled. This is like, there are songs that could have been squeezed between uncle cracker and pink. Um, like this is like, th- this is some of the, so some of that era uh, of of callbacks, which is weird because I was an adult then. Um, yes. And also, it wasn't yes. that great the first time around. Um, but uh, people are nostalgic yeah, about the early 2000s. They're going to have to I wrap around it. I mean, did, do you remember, people remember when, like, your like, uh, low cut pants and low cut pants about about Spider Man movies? Dumb. movies. <laughs> There was a there was a shooter that was made that like was nostalgic about Nintendo sixty four graphics. Yeah, felt like, weird to who me. the hell did that, that, that? We you know my opinion on that. I feel, that muddy I feel butt. cassettes are booming. <laughs> cassettes are booming, but yeah, as you were saying, Brett. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So I yes, this is this is this is pop music. Like, there's no place where there's not like nothing is left out that doesn't need to be left out there's keys and synths underneath there's digital and analog drums um it's mixed much like modern pop music where it's boomy and dynamic everything bumps they don't mix it like they they used to but like it's even at a low it's a it's it's pretty boomy um but uh one thing Oh, oh. There it is. Stop. Oh, there you go. Petey? Thanks. It got weird on my end. Uh, it got weird over here as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, something happened. Uh, All right. Uh, (laughs) Brett. Uh, where, where, where was I? What was the last thing I had to say? Um, Did I get to the point where I was talking about Lemmy? Um, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I did. Uh, sorry, I, did, I never was going to talk about Lemmy. That's that was a lie. Um, okay, so like uh, it mixed it. So so it's mixed in a way that's really poppy and boomy, and it's going to thump in a way that like like it's it, it, it's it's very modern in that in that manner. Um, it also has the the affectation the the that you put on young female vocals. Um, a lot of times. Uh, it's a groove first, and if you need to squeeze the the lyrics into a beat, you just sort of zip them in the very so like it's uh it it's very much like it's it's not a tight clean album in that manner where everything is is tight. They sort of they sort of stretch some rhymes in some places, um, but that's about the level that I put like pop music of 2002. Um, so like, there's a lot of jangle in this album. Um, a lot of chorus, a lot of delays. Um, so like, it's kind of like at times 90 call nineties college radio indie jangle. And sometimes it's the cure kind of jangle, but the whole time it's most definitely like a boss super chorus, <laughs> um, being used. I, I'm pretty sure. I was say um, there was hella jangle. In this. Yeah. Uh, and there like, is- nothing about this that i'm nostalgic about i think that this might have been when i was deep into my i hate everything pop culture phase yeah. dude even the lyrics are like and all like oh, i'm a love and then cry i'm like i'm old shut up yeah. <laughs> like, i don't want to hear it uh but like you know that that's me being old uh but like also the like i should get into the content of this uh of of the the music, uh, like the lyrics, I'm not the lyrics guy, but I will say while it hits, it hits the cut, co- it covers what you need to know what these songs are getting at and to, you know, tell a story and like communicate to the audience that it's targeting. It isn't the, it is not the, the most, uh, artful way of doing some of these. It's probably not the most earwormy, but like I'm a, white middle class american dude hi and i'm straight and been married for 15 years so uh i'm hey, a black dude from going? detroit that went so, through a progressive rock face 
Yeah. So like if you're coming to us to, to, to know yeah. about like a modern pop indie thing, like, yeah, you know man. what you're getting into. I, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. But, um, uh, I... <laughs> um, yeah. So the, the, the this album does uh, like, like has been said where it's, uh, where's it's uh, if it's on sleeve. And I will say uh, what David said about their previous album being more original and less of uh, sounding like what they influenced them. I think that's only because Drew hasn't brought the 1975 yet. <laughs> like, like, because that was because I asked last week about two different choices. Spoiler yeah. alert: the 1975 oh, one of them. Oh, thank God! Yeah, um, oh, we'll get it right. But, the 1975, and one of the the criticisms that was levied against them is that their previous album was very much like uh, a very much like 1975, Led like liter- Led Zeppelin, literally a Led Zeppelin album. Uh, literally a Led Zeppelin album. Are you talking about Pale Waves' his last album? Yeah, no, Pale Waves' last. Well. <laughs> no, P Pale was Pale referencing Waves Pale Waves' last Zeppelin album. album was very much like. The 1975 was big, and then their album came out, and they're from the same area of the world. It was yeah, like, oh, is this Vikings, just another 1975? And it was Hobbits. Like, no, two people came up with a semi-similar idea. Yeah, like, but like it, it's 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 but it, it's it, it's similarly 80s in that respect. But it, it's and they, they work together, so they could we pull from some a lot of the similar things. But I I don't mind it. it this definitely has. Uh, those pop punk sounds those pop punk concept pop uh songs uh you know it, it's a uh, pop songs that have a pop punk concept um uh, cannot make it any more obvious yes um or a like ballad pop rock uh pop rock concept uh he was a punk she did ballet what more and, can i say and they it's not a man movie <laughs> I mean, this, um, I, it's influenced. I'm, 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 I, those are influenced references. But yeah, but I think it does it well. It, it is a well constructed pop record, and it's a, it's it's well crafted. It's very tight. Uh, the, the the musicianship is there. The lyricism is uh not perfect, but I I don't mind it. It's just it's there. There they have the the themes they touch on are are good and important even if it kind of just touches it on a, on a light level um it is the the thing i i, I could almost because uh, 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 right now it's needed the representation of the visibility um is needed it, i can almost liken it to like crazy rich asians where fundamentally it's just a cute it's a cute nice romantic comedy which is like it, it, which the, the fundamental importance of that is like people of color, people of Asian descent can make okay mediocre movies. They don't have to all, it can all, it doesn't have to be all a bunch of white people movies. And the only movies that have people of color or Asian descent are, are the very important, very poignant movies that have a lot to say or niche things that are only for that community. Like, like not every black TV show has to be roots. Or like the you know the, the yeah not every Asian yeah you, know, you know it it, it does not did you, you can, watch anything on UPN yeah yes. exactly but oh but, man but the, sister sister yes that was the WB runs reruns yes. yes. <laughs> yeah they eventually became the same channel Plus it's like it's the same saying. lineage <laughs> it's like it's like technically WCW was all, both part, it's part of the WWE lineage now. Because they converge, so now UPN and WB, uh, WB are now have converged to, to the same lineage. Um, what were some of the key tracks for you on this album? A WGN <laughs> guy gobbled up with some, like yeah, but you can have fun, cute pop ballads that happen to be gay, <laughs> like done by a white yeah. woman from England. Yeah, never yeah. has I. That's okay. I Yes, and it's that's fine, and, and it normalizes they, that. Been doing into it for like, decades, you know, and it, it it just kind of like has that visibility because the the important thing, the importance of representation is that 
until there is normality. Until something, the way you normalize something is you just put it in front of people as much as you can until it becomes part of the tapestry. And until nobody on this podcast is saying you can't. And I, I'm that's saying what we're that you can. To... I say that you can try and cook something like this up in a pot, and it <laughs> might come out disingenuous. Uh, I don't know enough about Man. this album, but it seems pretty, uh, pretty on the nose about a couple of things. Like it is, it is like, like uh, targeted directly to a certain like age group, and like yeah. you play this right as the school buses hit the the pavement, like the yeah. playlist changes on the radio. Yeah. It's 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 got some of that. But yes, the themes. Yes, yeah, it, I it, think yeah. I think, but I think it works. I think it is, uh, that is still fine. I think it, it's. Worse I don't for think that. that there's a lack of pop music representing the uh, the 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 curious like nubile young lady. Uh, yeah. I think that's been going on for a while. I just just it's not going to it's it is it is still going to be a pop album with yeah. the with the writing of that. It's it's not going to be Lilith Fair uh, <laughs> levels of like you know yeah. this, it's, it's not that. Odd. Like it is 2021. We already know you've kissed a girl and you liked it. That's right. And also, they would the, fit in I so well. Girl, on Lilith Fair. I yeah. kissed a girl is the the perfect yeah, example was... of hey, take an artist who used to do Christian music and and then like oh, um... say hey, do you want to actually make money? And then like, okay, this is what you sing. Um, you will and... not disparage the early years of Alanis Morissette, sir. I will not let you. I mean, I. All right, we're talking about uh, you can't say that on television because I'll get early with Alanis. <laughs> like, well, we'll, um, we'll go to. No, but yeah, I. So that, that's like I. Yeah, that, see, that's the the thing that the 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 path that I was I was struggling to go down is like the content is fine. But it, being fine and being like good, like a well written song, are two different things that are hard yeah. to take apart. When the 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 like underlined and bolded like uh, text of the song is, it's a song that's not about. It ain't about me, as Doctor Phil would say. So, yeah, it's fine. Uh, yeah, let's yeah, talk about some of the. It's gonna be. Let's talk about some of the tracks, key tracks. Uh, Drew, what will be some of the key tracks to Zero or None? Well, to me, opening with jangly, uh, like, guitar with a poppy clean female vocal on change is a smart move. Um, it's a good lead-in for the album. Uh, it sort of gives you what you want. Um, like I've said before, let them know what you're getting into. You kind of know from this. Um, you don't own me. Um, Hey, there's a fuck sleazy men song in this uh, girl fronted uh, pop rock record. This is that one. It's a good one of those. Like, don't get me wrong. It's a good one of those. And fuck sleazy dudes. I will agree with the statement. Um, but yeah, don't give so, him some reggae. No. Um, he was in reggae. Um, no, sir. Consent is king, and we said no. Exactly. Um. And but if there's one song on this album that like reminds me like I want to go to concerts again at some point um, is Run To um, because that in a crowd of people just like dancing having a good time be a real fun one Uh, David what would be some of the key tracks for you I, I, I want, let's let's put a paint a mental picture really quick of Drew at a concert of this band in that crowd dancing around with that crowd. And I'm just smiling. Almost went. Almost went. I was this close to going to see them in 1975. Yes. <laughs> oh, I, 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 would, I would love footage of that. Yes. Ask them yes. to play Black Dog. Yes. Sorry, uh, Deej. But yeah, David, what would be some of the key tracks for you? You don't own me. Copy and paste pretty much everything Drew just said. And that's about it. <laughs> uh, Brett, what would be some of the key tracks for you? So the first thing I heard when I popped this thing, the, 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 the cassette tape into my you know, Ford Bronco, um, a change 
I hear this and I swear this is this is the point where I swear that this could go like in between Pink and Uncle Cracker on the playlist on the adult top 40 while I'm like standing on the side of a car uh, like 15 years ago. They like it's it's kind of it's kind of uncanny how how they really like they bottled up that that technique. Um, she's my religion. Uh, guitar tone. They've got it. They've got the warbles and they've got the delays. Um, and I tried to do some research. I was like, did they go out and find like a rolling jazz chorus and do? And then I was like, wait a minute. They make they make a pedal that does that now. And then I looked it up. It's probably just a super chorus. I don't know. It's, it's probably all space age magical stuff. But I, I somebody like had an idea for what sounds good when you're jangling, and it's making like some slight modulation occur. Um, Can I mention uh, again the dude that helped on this record also produced the Foo Fighters at one point? So yeah, but the Foo Fighters did other things. Than the, <laughs> yes, the, the, but I'm saying specific. if like somebody who's helped them like the ideas. The Foo Fighters, all, a band Foo I Fighters. love, do a lot of different things, but also had bits of that uh, in their history. Yeah. But did Blink-182, or sorry, did uh, uh, the Freudian slip, uh, did uh, did Foo Fighters ever oh, use the Blink-182's Damn It chord progression um, <laughs> in a throwback to a pop-punk song by using the pop-punk uh, chord progression? Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. Yeah, you could do. You mean yeah. Pachelbel's Canon in D? No, the, that that goes da 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 da. Yeah, the, the, the same. It, but then it goes again. It's not like I I have a base. Don't make me. Don't don't make me. I, damn it! I'm but, starting to realize why I went through my diehard I hate pop culture phase. <laughs> well, I mean, like it's not just Blink 182's Damn it. it! It can be any lazily written punk rock song we don't by stop any believing. number of people. Like no, it's it's not actually it's 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 just those four it's just those four chords with a with, with like a little like turnaround that uh, it's it's kind of it, it 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 definitely if you're gonna like call back that's 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 one way to do it and run two hey y'all remember that anime uh, program from 15 years ago give or take called Fooly Cooly yeah the pillows the soundtrack on the B side like to change the language and they stole that. Yeah, that's, that's that. That's that. Oh it's wow, that. it's that mm-hmm. because it's all it, it's 15 years ago. Action, isn't it? mm-hmm. It's all from 2002. Everything. Yeah. Yes. Um, hey, guys, this podcast has reminded me how much I hated 2002. Dude, like, I was there what? too. It sucked. Yeah, it, was, it, was it, was, it was bad. Ooh, it was awful. Right. Yes. Um, if I would, yeah. So as far as my tracks, I will point out, yeah. She's my religion is very much like the the guitar pop ballad. I think it does it well. It does it uh, fine, and it, it has some really nice like. It has it, it it it's well made. It it did like trigger the the part in my core like that was the same as that was uh in two thousand one two thousand two, like hating Avril Lavigne and all those things. Well, actually, no, I didn't really hate Avril Lavigne. Uh hating pop music and like listening to Linkin Park uh which I was like well hating pop music I you and said listening hating to pop, pop music, music. The, I, w- I was get getting to that joke I was going to say hating pop music and listening to pop music just with heavier guitars uh <laughs> you know the, that that hypocrite that I was in 2001 2002 <laughs> like, oh yeah God. I uh and listening to Evanescence but like it was triggering that like uh oh god Evanescence oh. um and I, I and, please, please. and the, what's changed is that instead of like, uh, instead of going into just going back and hating all of it, I just like oh, I can enjoy any of it. Um, it, it's fine. Wow. It, it, like <laughs> it's 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 great to go back. Shout out to show someone. Get like, down with the sickness, PD. Pro ZD. Pro ZD is just a good thing. Um, it, I think he's the one that did that. He does do. I want things. show. I want yeah. show. Yeah, show <laughs> someone. He does. I think he definitely did. Uh, he definitely did goofy things and uh, an anime. But he did a few of those goofy singing anime themes, uh, <laughs> and those are 
So I mean, good. that is that is that is some that that is some very Brett ass shit. And yes. I, I I give him my yeah. stamp of approval. Yes, good. And that and him uh, blindly uh, describing the exact mom- uh, beat to beat moments of Peter Pan the movie scenes I need to look. <laughs> without without <laughs> having it in front of him like he's gonna do this. Those are just beautiful videos. Um, but yeah, that has that sound. Uh, tomorrow is that again? It's it's that pop punk concept pop music. It, it's from it's pulled straight out down to it does it really well and it's fun to listen to uh if you don't own me is the, the same idea uh but slightly angrier and with a message it's it's an important message and 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 i like it and i like that it's being said and it's a nice record uh but it's definitely it's still that like 2001 pop pop on you know, to like it pulls it from those same influences. And, Back when uh, punk rock was done by people in their forties. Yes. Now it's done by people <laughs> in their sixties. <laughs> yeah. It's just literally the same people. <laughs> Even yes. the rock guys are younger than that. What the hell? Uh, they have time. It's a, the, the 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 it's the thing is just that they're all the same. They're the same people. It's just they're That's right. Yeah. Likely Henry not. Rollins <laughs> just gets older and crustier. Uh, um. But uh, yeah. same anger level. Just yeah. sort of. Fat mic, same fatness, same micness. Same drugs. Same. <laughs> um, more sad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Fat Mike but, being like slightly angry about stuff just doesn't. It's like, yeah. man, come on. Like, yeah. You've got a mortgage now. Like, come on, yeah. Michael. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's bring it back around the horn and talk about some conclusive thoughts, though. Uh, Brett, I mean, David, David, yeah. <laughs> David. I was like forgetting the, the initial order. Uh, David, what, what would be some? What would be your conclusion on this album as a whole? <sighs> I'm sorry. I apologize. I've been a real dickhead about this album. I'm sorry. Um, this is very 2000s. To a fault, yes. To a detriment, <laughs> yes. This is the second album I've heard from Pale Waves, and I liked the first one. Uh, I, I went back and listened to it again, and I, I listened to our podcast on it, and I liked it. But this is an album of a lot of influences that back then and now, in retrospect, I just do not get down with at all. And I hate saying this, because I did like their first album and even when i know i'm not the audience for it i can acknowledge that something doesn't necessarily have to be targeted towards me to be enjoyable i felt that way about their first album i really did this one i want to believe that in many ways it's very sincere and very unpretentious and I guess that's fine, but it it was just very, it's a little, like Brett said, it's very on the nose, and that's just not my cup of tea. Uh, They're just putting it all out there for the world to see with not a lot of cleverness or things that are really interesting or catchy to me, and I'm sorry, but no. I'm sorry, guys. Just no. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Brett, what would be what, how, what would be your conclusion on this album? Uh, when it comes to uh, like the the your number one source for commentary on representation in music, um, <laughs> Brett Hibbert here. Um, no, uh, it's uh, it, it, it ain't for me. But it ain't for me, and that's not a problem. Um, no, it's uh, it, it's it's definitely neat to see what's being made out there and what people are drawing from. Uh, I I didn't have like a terrible time with this album. I just had I was confused for a lot of it, um, and like really questioning myself and my my memories. Um, but like, you know, it it wasn't a terrible time. Like the the songs while they might be a little boring to me and like don't really 
grab me in any way with its hooks, that doesn't mean that it's not going to grab some people's hooks. I mean, I, I, they, they're obviously doing like enough numbers to chart and they're, they're known by a, an American man in Ohio. So yeah. like, there's at least that. Um, so yeah, like, it's not that I, I mean, and they've made an album that's like extremely clean and like, you know, maybe sterile to a fault, but they made a good album. They didn't make, they didn't make like the kind of garbage I would make if I was making an album 15 years ago um, with the technology I had 15 years ago to sound like 15 years ago. But like, it just, it's the perfect thing for me not to like, I don't know how, I don't know how else I could say it's the, the, the genres, the time period that it was drawing from all of those things are some of my least favorite, but they're trying real hard out there. And they, like the efforts, like they're well-meaning, it's just I'm just not into it's like I I, I don't mean them any harm. I don't want them like, to, to not like, be good. Like it's not about that. It's just yeah. like I don't get no. it. No, yes. no, no, I don't get it. Yes. Um, uh, first of all, Brett, you're not Butch Fig, so you wouldn't be making garbage anyways. But um, you the <laughs> I mean, I said making garbage, not taking credit for garbage. Uh, I know that uh, is. <laughs> uh, this album is this album is a is a is uh the, the this group and in particularly uh in particularly particularly uh in particular uh Heather Baron Grace apparently um setting her influences out on a table as is kind of arranging them in a way that she likes to kind of say what she wants to say, but just kind of just putting them out there on a plate as is. Um, she's very much influenced by the early 2000s, like pop, like rock and close pop music. Uh, and she puts it out there as is. It, it's good. It's fun. It's, it's well made. It's a good listen. And it's, and on its own, you know, I, I, I do think it's okay to, to just make a good set of, you know, like the the old the the saying I've uh, again one of my I, I am a walking soundboard because I have like thirteen different things I just say a million times but uh, that I quote from the discography's Twitter which is you don't have to make you don't have to reinvent the wheel to make a good set of tires but this is a little too much in that territory it needs some fresh rubber yes which is. It, there's a little bit of that. I think it's well made. I think it's an enjoyable record. And I think people can enjoy it. And I think people out there, uh, this is definitely not something that a criticism that is unique to us. It's not a criticism that they haven't heard before. If you look at the critical reception uh, section of their Wikipedia, you can see that this is not a criticism that they that uh, isn't been said before. I I it doesn't distract from just sitting down and getting to enjoy this album. Like, but it, there is something to be said that they could have blended those influences into something a little bit more formed into a unique voice. Like, I, I, I would the my easiest thing is to and, and you know comparing apples to oranges it, it might be unfair, but an English artist that took influences from the early two thousands and makes something made something beautifully unique. Rina Sawayama, for example. Who just who in her album from last year that we that I brought onto this record, uh, into this podcast. That one it was a, a which I loved. I yes. loved that one was war two thousand early two thousands influences on its sleeve. It created something a little bit more unique, a little bit more defined, a little bit more felt like her voice. Um. You know, I think it probably a little bit less other hands in the pop probably. Uh that probably helped with that, that uh that sound, but uh I I wish it, there's a part of me yeah, that that agrees with the idea that I wish that they would break away from kind of seeming l stuck the 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 quote that has is in here by uh, Ashley Bardem that she said that they that they were stuck as an imitation act. They they there's there's a potential there, but they are kind of stuck in the great value 
this. The previous the album. album uh, I, get, I know that people, you know, there's a clapback of who just made similar records. Their previous album was they came off as Great Value 1975. This album they came off as Great Value uh, Avril Lavigne 20 years later. Like, and that's fine. You can make that. You have a fun record. You enjoy it. And people love I it. I want but... great value for non blondes. And then, like, <laughs> we'll, like, we'll, we'll, we'll just... probably find it. <laughs> um, okay. No, but hold from on. Them. Four non blondes was. Do you know? Four non blondes. God, four non blondes was not that good. Uh, so, hey, I just, it came those. to mind. Um, she was better as a producer. I'm going to put that out there. Yes. Um, Speaking of pink. Oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yes. Hello, pink. Um, I'm sure she's watching. Yes. <laughs> she's a great fan. She's a big fan. She's kind of more of a lurker than to hang out. That's that's Diana's secret identity. Don't don't tell. Yeah, that's that. it's not that pink uh, in our uh, in our chat. Jack knew that's her Jeff. name. That's Jeff. Yeah. That's, that's Jeff. Um, the the. But. Well, that's carnation. That's, okay. That's, that's carnation. Uh that. I mean that pretty much is. Uh, I I think this is a, a record that was fun to listen to. Uh, even if even despite all that, it's, it was just like a fun ride. It was a good fun ride. Maybe you're so nice. <laughs> One of these days we're gonna get. I'm, I swear I'm gonna get you to absolutely trash an album. I swear. Well, we don't come to record breakers to be to listen to things that suck. Often. Yeah. <laughs> On purpose. Most of the uh, time. No. On purpose. Sometimes we'll have holiday specials, <laughs> yes, and then we'll that's right. we'll listen to and an album. I can the holiday special quality. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I could reach one of those albums. <laughs> yeah. I have uh, it on uh, vinyl. Hulk Hogan's <laughs> album somewhere floating around these yes. parts. Uh, uh, but but yeah, holiday record. <laughs> no God, it was it's no, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's it's Hulk holiday. I want no. that, that. I want that in my head so bad. Uh, Nineteen ninety two album Christmas so, so, with the Hulkster. So are um, we gonna do like a uh, a December record breakers holiday theme? Uh, I Probably mean, uh, we, we've, we're coming up on April Fools, and him and Han with two white honkies or whatever is like is is almost in play. Yes. Um. But yeah. Last but not least, let's get back on track. Drew, oh, what would be oh, your conclusive no thoughts on <laughs> four non blondes? Yeah. Like, what would be your on. conclusive thoughts on this album? Um. So this album. Is a, as a follow-up, I think is interesting because if the first record was taking a lot of their more 80s influences and this record then taking 90s influences, are we going to have like a 2010s influence record? Like, is that going to be the next? Yes. And then what does that become, which is sort of weird? Um, what I hope is they take more of the first record and some of this record, and then make another record. That's me. Um, I brought this record mostly because I was interested in hearing what Deej thought about it, because the first record was more in the wheelhouse, I think, of what we both, like, me and him both tend to like a little bit of the retro wave, uh, vapor wave sort of stuff from time to time. Yeah, you dabble. Um, as, he is, as he has brought up before. Um, and... It's an interesting once. record. Um, it's a thing where I really enjoyed it, um, but I think their first one was better um, in a lot of different ways. It's something where their first record, I'd be happy to put on and have it play back to front at any given point. This record, it's more of, all right, these couple of songs would fit into this playlist. This couple of songs will fit into this playlist. And like, they're my, I'm going to have those playlists on in the background while I work or something like that. Um, it's a different type of record for me personally, maybe part of it. And I didn't think about this until you guys brought it up. Maybe part of it is that the influences they're taking of, I don't have nostalgia for it because I just gave it like sort of a uh, short shrift back when it was going on what's the um, opposite of nostalgia that's probably what i have for this indifference <laughs> I, no I, I, opposite yes. like polar opposite I don't know. I have to oh. look it up. 
I'm feeling um, it though. I, I, without, we don't have vocabulary to describe the emotions of having to put up with 2002's music. But the thing to me that's interesting about this though is that, like, I'm now trying to give music that I maybe wrote off um, in the late 90s, early aughts, like, through until I was like 16, 17, and like, I was too cool for that or whatever. <laughs> trying to give it more of an ear than I used to um, and trying not to be like that punk that everybody sold out and everything sucks and blah, 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 blah. Um, they wrote a ska like, song about is, that. They did. They wrote a lot of ska songs about things sucking a lot. Um, Real Big Fish had a few. Mustard Plug had a few. Plant Smashers had a few. Um... But this is taking from things where this album specifically is taking from things that was in that period of like, I just don't want to listen to any of this. Um, and for me, that's an interesting point because like, I, I dig it. Um, I don't dig it as much as the first record, but I think that them making another one and doing this, I think is just an interesting thought experiment from the first one. And it's and it turned out pretty damn good. Do you think this album's opinion. cute? You should have seen it two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> um Yeah. Those are our complete thoughts on uh Pale Wave to a Mind. The, all of them. It. Complete. Yes. Complete. Nothing left behind. Except for our main event of the evening, the moment we've all been waiting for. Are completely sanctioned. Bars. Uh, lights on. Uh, haiku Exploding reviews. barbed wire. Oh my. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Make some sparklers. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yes. Let's do it. Let's go. Yes. yes. Um, He's got the people's mic five, cable. Seven, five. Uh, I thought he was going to do the Cody Rhodes. Thing. Yeah. I, 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 he's coming to us like he's a, a Jedi ghost sometimes, and I, I, I like it. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. Um, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Haiku numero, numero uno. Uh, David, what is your haiku? I didn't love it. Some very sincere pop rock. You can feel feelings. Uh, Brett, what is your haiku? It does its thing well. Singing to an audience. Not really my thing. My haiku. Not complicated. Not just for the skater boys. Your happy ending? <laughs> I commend well you for that one. Well done. Well played, <laughs> bit Petey. This is, this is me looking through. I was, I was here looking through the the Avril Lavigne's ter, two first two studio albums, looking at song titles like. What you didn't look through it? her one that was like taking like ripping off Japanese Petey. Hawaii culture. Petey yeah. rave at the buzzer bang. Also, I did find out because I I did that by going to her first album and then going forward in her chronology. Apparently, on her first live album, she covered uh, "Knocking on Heaven's Door," and I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some Go reggae. To- <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> um. Last but not no, least. I've got to go listen to Avril Lavigne cover. Not, I want to layer Lavigne. all of them. Paul McCartney, <laughs> Axl Rose, all, Avril Lavigne. Guns and Roses again. Jesus. Yes. Uh, no, Drew, uh, Drew what, what is your haiku? <laughs> I love them a lot. And their second album hit, Refrigerator. Yes. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, yes. Those are our thoughts on Pale Waves, Who Am I? Uh, you can, of course, find it on our Spotify playlist. Play Sorry, Records Pale Records. Waves. <laughs> uh, they, they have a lot of potential, but yeah. Keep it up. Keep, it up. Keep your channel. Uh, yeah, on the Spotify playlist, uh, uh is this, re- re- this record. <laughs> you can follow along at home, do your home, do your due diligence and your due diligence. 
uh, play record breakers at home game. Uh, you can find the link on our show pages on our on our show notes on our website. Uh, not on the Spotify playlist uh, because it's not on Spotify. It's not on any streaming services. Uh, it's an album that uh, caught my curiosity uh, through a couple of connections. Uh, <laughs> Uh, through somebody, through uh, one of these really cool, uh, a really cool uh, punk band, uh, the 1865, really different band, uh, the 1865, uh, listing a, a posting a link of black punks, bands and and artists. It's just a nice 50 black bad punks brains. you should know about. Oh, are we going Afro punk? Bad brains, bad bad brains. Not like in a sense, not like Afro. After, um, are we doing bad brains, bad brains? In a sense, yeah. uh, I'll, we'll do bad, bad brains, brains eventually. But uh, God, there was a name on there that caught my <laughs> attention. Were real pumped. Bad brains will come eventually. Uh, yeah, yeah will. Somebody will. Uh, Talk about there a was a name that. The, yes, uh, the name a name that caught my attention there. Uh, I I was like, oh, that caught my attention. I was like, I was curious about their music career, and I looked up. And they were in a band that re- was set to release an album, but they they had an issue with their record label, um, and it caused it not to be released except for a few promotional copies, and it became a collector's edition. Uh, it's the band from a, a, a person who I I have a strong suspicion that both uh, David and I love, and I think everybody else is fond of. Uh, we're going to be exploring. Uh, just out of curiosity, uh, part of the music career of one Cree Summer, and we're going to be talking about her band, uh, Subject to Change, and the album, uh, Womb Amnesia. Yes! Yes, so, yes, Subject to Change. Okay, yes, So Katie. we're going to be talking yes, about indeed. that. So, uh, we're going back to the nights, but, but it's going to be a, an intriguing thing to discuss. Um, so look forward to that, but that'll be next week, uh, and this is this week. And you can, of course, find us all over the internet. Uh, uh, David is at Call Me DJM. Brett is at Hibbity Bear Brett. No waves, yes. Don't hate me. <laughs> uh, Hibbity Bear Brett, H-I-B-B-I-T-Y-B-I-B-E-R-D. Drew is at Extra Super X. I'm at PD Rave. The show's at four record breakers. That's the number four record breakers. Recordbreakerspodcast.com. Recordbreakerspodcast at gmail.com. Rebelli.net for this and other shows. Rebelli TV on YouTube and Twitch. Um... Catch us live on Twitch through the Tomes D and D on Tuesday. Record Breakers on Wednesdays. Space Trucking with uh, Starbound wow. now on Thursdays or whatever we're playing uh, at the point you listen to this. All this stuff at other days. Um, like, share, subscribe, uh, comment, give us reviews, feedback. Love the communication back and forth. Um, yeah, do all the things. Until next time. Hasta los huevos. Bye bye. Bye bye. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>